Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's a podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike, and today, uh, I'm not sure if I'm a little late in talking about this one. Uh, game has been out for a little while, but I kind of, I guess, want to get my own two cents regarding the whole controversy surrounding PAL World in regards to, you know, uh, its stealing of assets from pokemon digimon and what have you coming from somebody that has put in like a few hours into the game uh for context i'm not really big on that survival crafting genre you know like minecraft or valheim or what have you uh my brother is though and i usually play with him because you know it's a fun multiplayer thing to do but for myself, I, I, I never find myself into that genre because I can never play those games by myself. Like with others, it's fine because, you know, you're you're hanging out and it's kind of, you know, I, I think in some ways kind of a mindless thing to do when you're just with friends and you just want to like chill. But for myself, I don't know, I'm more into like story or, you know, if if I want to even take a break from that, like just something action orientated like monster hunter um uh, you know what have you but no i i have been playing a little bit of pal world and um for those of you who have basically have been living under a rock for the past few months or days uh because pal world has taken over uh the world it seems um survival crafting game the kind of gimmick with this one though is that you can capture like monsters that exist in the environment think like pokemon and you can have them you know either battle with you alongside you or you could have them at your base doing like the crafting tasks that uh you you would normally have to do yourself right and overall, I, I think in terms of like games in this genre, I do, I am, I do find myself kind of having fun with it. I don't know if it's just you know it, it's taken enough inspiration from like Pokemon or like other game genres, uh, outside of just that survival crafting formula that it, it works for me. But um. Yeah, I, I find myself uh, kind of enjoying it. Uh, not to say it doesn't have its issues. I feel like uh, it's still an early access, so it's super buggy, it's, uh, super janky with a lot of its aspects. So, you know, but that hopefully will get better as updates come out with it. Um, and it still has a limited appeal for me mainly because i'm not really into like base building or like i don't know i'm a minimalist at heart so anytime i have to build a base for something it's just usually just a box that's just okay if i need to expand it i do or whatever but um going on to like the controversy like up to the lead up of this game it was kind of marketed i mean I don't think it was purposefully marketed from the team. I don't know if they've actually used this phrase, but a lot of people described it as like Pokemon with guns, right? Um, because for context, you could give like the little pals they call in the game, but the little creatures you capture weaponry, like machine guns or what have you. And, you know, that's like another way that they like fight. It's like kind of like a special move, I would say, for like most of the pals. Like you have to basically unlock it through like crafting and it's like a one-time thing you like activate goes on for a brief moments so they're not constantly holding guns and doing attacks most of the time they're like fighting like normal normal pokemon or what have you but um you know in the past few days people have been questioning like how much inspiration have they taken from pokemon drawing direct parallels to some of the designs um one to the you know like saying that they are really close in resemblance um now i do have to preface anything i say about this by stating clearly that i am not a lawyer in any way i do not know anything about you know copyright infringement law um or what have you but uh at least to me from playing the game and you know 
capturing a few pals and whatever. I think uh, I, I think the designs are distinct enough to where it shouldn't really like actually trip any copyright infringement on like a like on a technical level. Granted, it is subjective. I know recently we had that case with Andy Warhol and him kind of creating art uh, inspired by a photo that somebody took of Prince, and it was ruled in favor of Andy Warhol's uh, estate. So, again, more of a subjective scale. But to me, I think that there is like enough distinction to where if you argue it in the right way, it, it shouldn't really be an issue in terms of um, you know copyright infringement or anything like that. Uh, but granted, they they pull from I think multi. I, I think I don't think it's just Pokemon. I think it's also like Digimon and things like that. So maybe there's something more egregious that I'm just not aware of because I don't like have all the designs memorized in Pokemon or Digimon or what have you. Um, I I think honestly, it, the copyright would be more egregious, or it is more egregious with a lot of its like sound design. So part of this, so for context with the developers, they also, they're kind of known for this weird genre of creating games that are, you know, quote unquote, inspired by other big games. So they have like a plat, uh, like a, I don't know what you call it, like an action platformer inspired by uh, Hollow Knight. Um they have a game like Craftopia, I think is the name of it, that's inspired by like Breath of the Wild. And you could probably tell that they took a lot of what was in that engine and just kind of carried over to Pal World because a lot of the sounds the a lot of the sounds that you hear in Pal World is feels like it's directly ripped from Breath of the Wild. Like it is weird, like discovering new places. Um like you know plays that distinctive chime and it sounds like almost exactly the same now mind you i don't necessarily have an ear for music or like sound design or anything like that so maybe it's like slightly up pitch but i, I think honestly if we're wanting to accuse power world of like stealing assets i think that's like where it's most egregiously egregiously i don't know if that's what i'm looking for but more um kind of insidious eh, insidious oh my god how can i not say this right now point is i i think that's where the bigger issue lies is in like a lot of the sound elements that it takes and also like the ui now granted i know with like video game ui it's a little bit weirder because i think um well, i don't know if it's like for ui elements or if it's like specific game mechanics like it's not a copyright so much as it is like kind of a patent you have to file or something like i know um dynasty warriors has kind of a weird one where they have kind of this um i don't know if it would if it's like a patent for um like enemy density on the screen like if you have enemies that are like too dense it's too similar to like the dynasty warriors um genre and you know it could get you in a lot of flack for that which a lot of people have said is so stupid that that's a thing but you know that's the world we live in um so yeah i don't know if the same applies to like ui elements or like a lot of the gameplay aspects like they have like a hot cold meter that looks exactly the same if not very similar to uh what you find in like breath of the wild or tears of the kingdom or whatever um uh beyond so yeah but I, i'm trying to wonder how much of this will actually translate into any type of um legal eh, consequences for the developers and publisher of uh pal world because you know i think uh nintendo put out like some sort of like small statement saying that they want to like look into it that they want to like you know look into see if that there is that there is something that they can't pursue i think there was like a modder that was trying to mod in like ash catch him and like some actual pokemon models into the power world game and his videos got like um taken off from like twitter and i don't know if he got like uh what's it called uh 
DMC aid? No, um, I, I forgot what the term is when they like, like a cease and desist, basically. I don't know if the Nintendo send, sent anything like that to him. Um, but so how will this pan out for the power of developers? I think it depends on if, I mean, obviously it depends on if Nintendo pursues any legal action against them because uh, while, again, it is subjective and I don't know if they like copied enough to really qualify as like copyright infringement. It doesn't really matter for these cases. Like, you know, Nintendo just has to pursue it aggressively enough to not make it worthwhile to keep the game um, up and running. You know, it would just cost them too much in terms of, like, legal fees. But granted, I, I don't know if the case would be argued, like, in America versus Japan, because I think both company, both, like, obviously Nintendo, but also the Power World developers and publishers, um, they're both based in Japan, so I don't know if the case would be argued in Japan or, you know, United States. And I don't know the nuances of Japanese copyright law or anything like that. Um, yeah, because obviously Nintendo can just, you know, take into the take into the cleaners if they wanted to. Like Nintendo Nintendo slash Pokemon Company, because they're technically two different entities entities, sorry, that um you know, they obviously collaborate a lot together, but you know, um, I they are again like separate entities, so I don't know if like they would come together to bring a joint, like a joint suit, if you can do that, or if it would just be Nintendo doing it. Because again, I think Nintendo has the better case if you look at like the sound design and the UI elements. Um, or if it would be Pokemon, or maybe another company that I'm not aware of. Uh, so I guess I'm, I guess I really wonder what's going to pan out with that. And a lot of it's kind of a shame because playing the game, you know, again, it's kind of in a long line of, you know, the survival crafting genre, which is already a market that's oversaturated. But I think within this game, there is, there is, they are talented. It's not like it's a, poorly made game right like you could tell that effort has been put into it even if a lot of it is kind of again heavily inspired by like other elements from other games um and it's like a shame because i i think you know they are talented enough to where if they applied themselves i think to a more original idea they, like they wouldn't have this issue you know, and I think that would create like an amazing product. Granted, it might it would probably still be like janky as all hell, but um, yeah, it's just it just kind of sucks that you know. Uh, but I mean, I get it. Like, I think the the whole gimmick of like oh, Pokemon with guns is kind of what partially helped at least get Pal World initial attention, if not uh, to help sell the game. Um, but, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Granted, I haven't played any of the other games like Craftopia or, you know, anything else. So maybe this is just a coincidental fluke that Pal World plays so well or something. <clears throat> but, um, and supposedly like, I don't know. I read this on a Twitter post, but I don't know if it's like accurate or not. Um, but like they they're kind of like self-taught programmers um you know just kind of teaching themselves as they were making the game and you know it's kind of like a nice story small development team obviously uh and they obviously hit it running with power world so i don't know i i, I guess i uh, i will be very curious to see how this um progresses in the future and granted, I wonder if um, Power World will be able to maintain its popularity or if it's just like kind of, you know, um, this one hit wonder in terms of gaming, you know, where it just has a lot of buzz now, but 
you know, it can lose it over time if they don't come up with, you know, content fast enough, updates fast enough, or, you know, what have you. Uh, but yeah, I think that's just kind of my two cents on the matter is that I think there could there could potentially be a case for copyright infringement. Again, not a lawyer, but I think people are too hyper fixated on like, oh man, the monster designs are so similar to uh, what we've seen in like Pokemon and or Digimon or whatever. Um, without like maybe looking at some of these ele other elements that I think again is more like an egregious example of like stolen assets, but. Um, yeah, it remains to be seen. And I, I guess on a side note too, with a lot of these monster with a lot of these like PAL designs, like not only do I think a lot of it isn't really stolen from the like, you know, Pokemon or what what have you, but a lot of the PAL world designs are kind of better, I think. Are a lot more interesting. Okay, sorry for that brief interruption, but I think I've pretty much finished up the point that I was talking about. Um, if you want to support the podcast, you could do so in a number of different ways. If you wanted to do a one-time donation, I recommend my Ko-Fi account. My Ko-Fi also lets you do uh, monthly, you know, monthly payments for support, but I would recommend my Patreon account more because... Uh, not only do you have different tiers, but with those tiers comes like different, uh, different merch or, and, you know, different awards for, you know, certain higher tiers or whatever. Uh, I, if you also want to help on a short basis, I also have a merch store where you can buy, you know, t-shirt mugs or what have you with promo art and my logo, uh, done by, uh, Nocturnal Essence, uh, George Isaac of, uh, George Isaac of Nocturnal Essent. Um, all this is linked on my Twitter account, uh, at Podcasting Pasta. Again, that's at Podcasting Pasta. All one word, P's are capitalized. Again, not sure it really matters. Uh, I also recently opened up a Blue Sky account. I'm not really going to be posting on it, but I just made it to reserve the name. So, you know, just in case. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for joining me today, and I hope to bring more content to you soon. Later.